All right, you blood-loving bastards. Here is the ultimate witch build. This particular build can be done in many ways. I will cover some of the options and I've tried to stay true to the preset where witch is wielding a dagger and this specialty is scoundrel and necromancy. All right, so let's cover immediately what can you do? How can you build this? As for the weapons, you have a couple of choices. Dagger plus shield, which I'm using, is the tankiest one it and it works fantastic. Two daggers, that means a lot more DPS than this. But trust me, bouncing shield is extremely powerful, so you're not going to benefit that much. And it has a low cooldown. If you don't want anything to do with daggers, then you're going to have to change scoundrel skills because scoundrel skills only work with daggers, but you can use a staff, for example. Then you'll be more of a necromancer than a witch, so it's kind of optional, but that will change the build a lot. So if you want to stay true to the preset and wear a dagger, either go for two daggers or dagger and a shield. Focusing your attributes depends on what type of build you prefer. I'm going to focus on this particular build now that I'm using with dagger and shield. If you went with two daggers, then finesse is a must. Just max out finesse and either go for rest of the points into intelligence to boost your spells, like Mosquito Swarm, Grasp of the Starved, Infect and Decaying Touch, or put the rest of the points into wits so that these spells that you're using actually crit. But then you need to also put talent Savage Sortilage if you go down that road. It's this talent over here. If you're using this build with Dagger and Shield, you have three options. And every option is viable. There will be differences in damage depending on what you focus on using during the fight, but everything works. First version. Go for something of a balanced build amongst finesse and intelligence. That way you will have a reliable damage. You'll, you're wearing a dagger, so whenever you're behind the target, criticals are automatic. That immediately means that the damage done with daggers will be all right. It's not going to be maxed out, but it's going to be a decent damage nonetheless. Intelligence is our main stat for the spells, as I've said earlier. So that's one version. Get yourself enough stats so that both spells and your auto attacks hurt. Another version is if you max out finesse, same as, as I said with the dual wield, and then just put the rest of the points into either intelligence or wits. The third option is if you completely negate finesse, but that is extremely risky option, since scoundrel skills scale with finesse, and you put most of the points into intelligence, but not max it out, and max out wits. That way you will have almost maximum crit chance that you can get. Armor that you're wearing also matters. If you wear more finesse based armor, then you're going to get more finesse bonuses. If you're wearing more intelligence based armor, you'll get, you'll get more intelligence bonuses. And both of the setups will provide you with a decent amount of wits as well. What I did is I mixed it up between intelligence and finesse, mainly because I'm using the balanced version of the build. For the combat abilities, doesn't matter if you're using dual daggers or if you're using dagger and shield. What you need to do is max out warfare and max out scoundrel. Put three points into necromancy so that you can use grasp of the starved and other beautiful necromancy skills. If you have some leftover points that you don't know what to do with, it's rather simple. Put them either into dual wielding or single handed, depending on your weapon choice. If you want, add a couple of points into polymorph, mainly to get Heart of Steel, Chicken Claw and Chameleon Cloak. The thing is, I did put polymorph points, but in the end, I did not use polymorph skills at all because I had so many to choose from, it was useless, except the Chameleon Cloak. 
As for the talents, elemental affinity, definitely go for that. Whenever you cast blood and you're standing in blood, your necromancy skills will cost one less action point. So just to confirm, right now I'm not standing in blood. In fact, costs three action points. In fact, now costs two action points. See? So you can do a lot of good stuff as long as you implement blood rain into the build. For that, you're going to need one point into Hydra Sophist, which I forgot to mention. So definitely have either from gear or directly if you put one point into Hydra Sophist, you're going to need it. Hydra Sophist and Necromancy are good together because of the Decaying Touch plus Restoration. But that's for another build if I do something like that. On a Necromancy build, this one is more of a witchy build. Executioner or the Pawn, Hothead. Opportunist is optional, you don't have to go for it because the damage from the one dagger, if you're going for this setup, is not going to be as great as with two daggers. So yeah, that's why Opportunist is completely optional. If you won't, go for it. If not, no need. Picture of health I've used because we are using a lot of warfare. So boost in health is extremely good. Other options are Leech, Living Armor. Typical stuff, all skilled up, bigger and better comeback kid if you want that. I never use that, I don't know why, but yeah. If you're going for a version of this build that uses a lot of wits, which means a lot of crit chance, then Savage Sortilage is a must, so that your necro spells crit, and trust me, that will bloody hurt. If you go for two daggers, then stench is an option. If you're going for dagger and shield, then stench is useless. You're going to be tanky as it is. And typical stuff, walk it off. Dag Dag Goose is good if you're using two daggers. And that's it. That's the whole build. Now I'm going to cover the build if you're going from low level. If you're just starting. Depends all on what you choose to do. What type of build that I've already told you about will you build for yourself. Wits should be the last to focus on even if you want to go for a crit build. A critical chance will increase in the later portions of the game when you have better gear. For the first region, ignore wits and focus on either finesse or intelligence and if you want to go for balanced version then just spread points on finesse and intelligence if you want to wear shield immediately you do need 14 into constitution to do that memory is not needed early on it's needed later as for the combat abilities what to focus on from the be from the beginning is simple put one or two points into necromancy and then focus scoundrel and warfare until you get to the point where you can use grasp of the start and then put three points into necromancer or you can just focus necromancy through gear that way you can put only one point into necromancy and from the gear you'll get two more and eventually one point into hydra sophist will be necessary that's how you can build this from the start. When you get to the second region, there's a respect mirror, so if you make mistakes, everything can be fixed. I think I covered it all. If I did forget something, please post in comments. I will answer, as I always do. Now let's cover the skills. This is how your setup should look like later in the game. The skills that are a must are these. Backlash, Throwing Knife, Bouncing Shield, Cloak and Dagger, Sleeping Arms. Sleeping Arms mainly because you will set Atrophy to your opponent and when they are atrophied they cannot attack. Corrupted Blade, it does Decaying and Diseased, which is extremely good. And it's resisted by Physical Armor. Bone Cage, you'll see what I did with Bone Cage with Lone Wolf as well on that Paladin Bridge. You won't believe how much physical armor I got from it. Living on the edge and Death Wish is always a good combo if someone is about to die in your party. I haven't had the chance to use it because I was never even low on health on that Paladin Bridge, but it's always a good combination to have. 
You put simply living on the edge on someone and they will not die for two turns, no matter what happens. And then you put also that wish on that same character so that they do more damage the less health they got. Decaying touch is especially useful. It will do a lot of damage with this setup and it will set decay. And after that, if someone from your party has good amount of points in Hydro Sophist, they can pop restoration and it's going to be a powerful combo. Although people are swearing on Bloodsucker, I've used it in the video just to test it out when I'm standing in a pool of blood and it never works as intended. This thing sucks. I hate this skill. I fucking hate it. I don't know why people are so bent on it. I can't see usage from it. I can't. Tested it in multiple ways, in multiple situations. It never paid off. So I would completely ignore it if I were you. Maybe it's useful early in the game, but... It does says that it can restore up to 3000 vitality. It never did. And I was standing in the fucking largest pool of blood that you've ever seen. Alright, and it did about thousand and a half. If you won't use it, but I will never use that skill anymore. It goes with decaying touch as well, so when you use blood sucker on someone that was decayed, it will do damage instead of heals. But it's sucky, it's sucky, it's sucky. Mosquito Swarm will heal you up, it will also set bleeding, it receives bonus from intelligence, so depends really what kind of a setup you're doing. With my setup it does a lot of damage, especially if it crits. Blood Rain is a necessity here, that's why you need one point into Hydrosophist. When you're standing in blood, as you've seen, your skills will cost less. Shackles of Pain, very useful, because it's resisted with physical armor. Chameleon Cloak, the only thing that you need from the Polymorph Tree in this setup. Grasp of the Star, that's why you need 3 points into Necromancy. Grasp of the Star will do stupid damage, you'll see. Especially when you combine Tick of the Fight with Grasp of the Star. Well, that's it. That's what I would put as my setup. And now, let's get cracking. Let's test this build properly on the Paladin Bridge. I was already here testing it out for a couple of times. It worked perfectly fine. I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna immediately use the Bouncing Shield ability to get rid of their physical armor. Every spell of the Necromancy tree, well actually most of them, are resisted by physical armor. What I want to try to do is simple, really. I want to create the opportunity to use Grasp of the Star and Blood Rain, which is not for some reason on my quick bar. And you shall see how powerful that combo is. Obviously early in the game you won't have that combo, but doesn't matter, you'll get it later on. To make things even more interesting, I'm gonna cast Shackles of Pain on one of these Paladins. We want to be a proper witch, right? Now we have a couple of people around me, not enough. You'll see what my plan is. Right now, I'll try to get my physical armor up, because these bastards do insane amount of physical damage so I need to be prepared for the upcoming storm of physical damage. Fantastic thing about this build is that you have a lot of options from afar as well so you're not strictly focused on melee attacks. Bouncing shield and throwing knives are really really good. But time for us to start doing some proper damage. Eh, that was weak. Still, I can now use Sleeping Arms. Sleeper gums, sleeping Arms will set Atrophy, so she won't be able to use her attacks in the next turn. Right now I have Glitter Dust, so I cannot go into Chameleon Cloak. Now it's time for some fun. Check this out. 
gonna move in between these characters so that I can get most out of Tick of the Fight boost. So I got plus 60% damage, absolutely amazing. Now I'm going to cast Blood Rain. Because of the elemental affinity it only cost me one action point. Blood is all over these bastards over here and now it's time for Grasp of the Starved. There we go. <laughs> so what was the damage? Let me check out. Uh, yeah, I regained also about 20, over 20,000 vitality. So I did around 15,000 damage with Tick of the Fight boost for 60%. And look how healthy I am. No problems. I got 10,000 physical arm. Obviously this is with Lone Wolf, so let's not get confused. And the whole point of this is that you do not need so many skills. I haven't. I will not be able to use half of the skills that I have simply because everything else is so goddamn effective. Destroyed both of these physical armor, so I have still plenty of options what to do. Mosquito swarm only costs one action point, and if I crit. Actually, I don't need to crit. Dead. Gonna get near to get the attack of opportunity. Did not crit, unfortunately. That's why I was always saying that crit is actually good on rogues. Because of that attack of opportunity. You want to see something ridiculous? Now after we've done all that, use bone cage. Twenty-one thousand physical armor. <laughs> Who's gonna taunt me now? Oh boy, this is fun. Some of you will now say, "Well, you've used Grasp of the Starved, which uses two source points, and you use Tick of the Fight, which uses one source point." So I've used all three source points. Well, that shouldn't be really an issue. You get three source points after Driftwood area, so you can do this combination after Driftwood already. And in Driftwood maybe, depending on what level you are. I don't know at what level you can buy Grasp of the Starved. I would have defeated all of these guys without it as well. This build is so goddamn good that I don't need Grasp of the Starved, but I wanted to showcase you guys what this can do. And I think you're not convinced that this is truly a fantastic build. Just go behind this bastard and then do some damage, maybe buff myself even further. Let's kill this bastard. Your auto attacks won't deal as much damage, but it doesn't matter really. It really doesn't matter. He's 3 meters, he is... Hmm. I don't know if he's going to bounce on me, but like it matters. I have insane amount of physical armor still remaining, so why should I be worried, right? Move in here. Now I'll go into com into invisibility just because I want to use that combo decaying touch and bloodsucker so that I see what happens. Decaying touch and now we are standing in a lot of blood so this should do maximum amount of damage 3000, 3 whatever. Let's see. It just doesn't do enough damage. No matter in how much blood you're standing on. I don't know, I don't like that skill, blood suck. I simply don't like it. It never works as intended.
Look how much stuff we can put on them, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I was doing that just for fun, I know there was no point in doing that. He deflected the bouncing shield, oh look, still 8000 physical fucking armor. Well, there you go, lads. I hope you enjoyed this witch slash necromancer build. I don't know what to call it, really. Is it more of a witch or more of a necromancer? I'd say more of a witch. I think I'm going to do specific necromancer as well with stuff or something like that. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to create something for the necromancer build that is more different than this. But I think you guys also under understand how to play Necromancer and what to focus on. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget please to check out the description for possible donations and also more info on my other channels. Special thanks to my patrons who are helping me a lot. And see you guys soon. Hey.